Alright guys, welcome to your very last tutorial in glycolysis. In this tutorial we're going to be finishing it up going through steps 7 to 10. 10 is of course the last step in glycolysis. And the good thing is, these are actually pretty simple steps, unlike you know step number 6 which is pretty confusing. So let's go ahead and start with step 7. And remember, whenever we left off in the last tutorial, we left off with a molecule called C3H4 O four P two. Now in this step we use another enzyme. Again, I don't really need to draw these enzymes, or you may have to remember the enzymes for a test or something, but just remember that all of the reactions in this process happen through an enzyme. So even though I may not draw it sometimes, there's always enzymes at work here. So in step number seven, it's no different. We use an enzyme and this enzyme is called phosphoglycerokinase. And what this does is it takes this molecule right here and it plucks off a phosphate from it and it adds it to ADP. Now this ADP is just a molecule that's floating around the cell, ADP. And remember, whenever we add a phosphate, from this molecule to ADP, whenever we add a phosphate to ADP, which is two phosphates, we end up with ATP. Now remember, ATP is what we use for energy in the cell. So this is the very first step where we generate an ATP. So finally, we started making some energy here in step number seven. Took us long enough, but we finally started doing it. So remember, that since I'm showing this chemical reaction, we produce one ATP, but actually we have two of these molecules, remember. So we're actually producing a net value of two ATPs. Now also remember that whenever we went over steps one through three in the first glycolysis video, we invested two ATPs in steps one through three just to get the process of glycolysis going. And now in step number seven, we created two ATPs with these two molecules. So right now, we pretty much broke even. We're at a net value of zero, because we invested two to get it going, and we just created two. So pretty much, the energy that we invested in the first three steps has been paid back. So any energy that we make from this point forward is total profit, I guess you could say. So let's go ahead to step number eight and see if we create any energy yet. So step eight. Come on, energy. Let's see what happens. So in step number eight, you use the enzyme phosphoglyceromutase, and I'm not going to draw the enzyme. Well, you know what? It's going to bother me if I don't. Just to reinforce the idea that you use an enzyme for everything. So this enzyme is pretty much making this crap happen. And what he does is he pretty much is going to move a phosphate around your molecule. So right now, Remember, we have two three carbon molecules. We have a carbon, and it's linked to another carbon, and it's linked to another carbon. And we also have a phosphate that's linked to this third carbon right here. Now, what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to move it from, let me pick a color, here. This is where we started. This is where the phosphate was originally. And it's going to move it to here. Let me draw another diagram. So, of course, the main backbone of our molecule, carbon, 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 uh, someone's sexting me, carbon, carbon, carbon doesn't change, our backbones of carbons don't change, this enzyme is just going to move it to the second carbon instead. So, moves it from the third carbon to the second carbon. So, again, just to reinforce the idea, what the enzyme basically does is it takes this phosphate and moves it up here, pretty much changes your structure around a little bit. So, step eight, very easy, the enzyme called phospho glyceromutase moves your phosphate from the third carbon to the second one. Simple enough. Now again, what we're hoping to get is some ATPs out of that, but we didn't generate any energy yet. So let's go ahead and go to step nine and see if we can finally get some energies out of this. So in step number nine, you use another enzyme, and just, you know, in case you guys were wondering the name of these enzymes, if you guys are, you know, need to know this for your test, this is called enolase, E-N-O-L-A-S-E. And what this enzyme does is it removes a water molecule from the molecule that we started with, and let me go ahead and write this out. So right now, remember, we are at the molecule C3, H5O4P1, 
And what we're about to do is I said this enzyme removes a water molecule, so minus an HTO molecule. And as you can see, whenever you remove a water molecule from this right here, we're going to end up with C3H3, draw my letters a little neater, H3O3P1. So of course we removed two hydrogens, so we have three right here, and also one oxygen, so that's why we have O3. And our final product at, up to this point is C3H3O3P1. But remember, just to recap one last time, that even though I'm drawing this chemical reaction once, remember that we actually have two molecules of this right now since everything is happening twice. Now this molecule that we actually have two of up to this point is called P E, P. It actually is a longer word, a type of acid, but whenever we can, you know, abbreviate something in biology, take full advantage of this. So now remember, we have two molecules of this PEP. -E awesome, but what the heck? We still aren't getting any freaking energy here. So now we have to go to step 10. And let me draw this a little bit neater. Step. 10 and step 10 is our last freaking step of glycolysis so if we don't get any energy here I'm gonna be pretty freaking peed off so what we do in this step is we use an enzyme of course and this enzyme in case you guys were wondering is called pyruvate kinase and that's what it does or excuse me <laughs> that's not what it does that's just the name of it it transfers a phosphate from PEP to ADP and we finally get our ATP created. So remember right now we have the molecule PEP and the formula for this is C3H3O3P1 and what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to transfer a phosphate, this one right here, and it's going to give it to an ADP. So it gives it to ADP P, and whenever this happens, we end up with, of course, an ATP. This is what it creates. Creates an ATP, and it also creates, since you, you know, you no longer have your phosphate, C3, H4, O3. And I just want to stress this because I should have said it before, but I know this is kind of confusing. What we're doing right here is we're pretty much this enzyme is going to get rid of this phosphate and give it to ADP, creating ATP. So we no longer have this phosphate. And you may think that you may be left with C3H3O3, but we're left with C3H4O3. Whenever you see that my hydrogen count and my oxygen counts are a little bit weird, it's just because of the way that they're bonded or whenever you release a phosphate group, your hydrogens and oxygen may be bonded a little bit differently. But I didn't want to specify every single bond because that's not really important for the scope of this tutorial. The scope of this tutorial in glycolysis isn't about your hydrogens and oxygens, it's mainly about your carbons and your phosphates. So it's about creating energy, turning ADP into ATP, and also those NAD crap that we're going to be talking about later on. But again, don't really focus on the hydrogen and oxygen counts right now because we want to cover the main topics because even though hydrogen is gained as the phosphate was lost, we're not really concentrating on that. And I should have said that a long time before, but step number 10, this is what you need to know. The enzyme called pyruvate kinase transfers a phosphate from this molecule right here from the PEP to ADP creating ATP. Now remember, we were at zero, we were broke even so far, but since this actually occurs twice, we are now gaining two ATP. So throughout your entire process of glycolysis, we ended up positive two ATP. Pretty freaking sweet. That was a good deal, gain some energy that we can use whenever we're you know, you know, playing Xbox or eating hot boxes or, or something. So remember, step 10 is when we finally gained two ATP. Don't worry about the hydrogens and oxygens that much. They're just worried about the bonds. That's why they changed a little bit. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for understanding glycolysis and sticking with me for this video series. And if you have any questions, then just go ahead and ask me on my forum, tnbforum.com. So thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Google+, and I'll see you guys next time.